Hi, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the relative plate motion that results in transform plate boundaries and the sorts of geologic phenomena we associate with those boundaries. Let's begin our discussion by taking a look at a classic location, Wallace Creek in California. Wallace Creek is the name of the little drainage here. I know it's dry at the moment, but when it rains, it does actually have water in it. And it uh, drains across the San Andreas Fault. Motion along that fault has offset Wallace Creek along this central segment right here. You'll recall that the outermost rocky layer of the Earth's surface is broken into a series of slabs that we call plates. And these plates move around relative to one another. The boundaries between the plates come in basically three flavors. The plates can either be moving apart from one another, in which case we call them divergent plate boundaries. They can be moving towards one another, in which case they're convergent plate boundaries. Or they can be sliding past one another. In that case, they're called transform plate boundaries. And that's going to be the focus of this video. You'll notice that the example we just looked at, the San Andreas Fault, is a transform plate boundary shown on this map in green. Now, if we zoom in on that situation, here's the west coast of North America you'll see the San Andreas Fault is that central part of the map. And then up north, there is a similar looking fault, the Queen Charlotte Fault, which is basically just a, a Canadian equivalent of the San Andreas Fault. The rock that is on the west side of the San Andreas Fault is part of the Pacific Plate, even if it's not oceanic lithosphere and is continental lithosphere, like the Baja Peninsula, of Mexico, or the cities of San Diego and Los Angeles and most of the central California coast. On the east side of the San Andreas Fault is the North American Plate. San Francisco is just on the east side of the San Andreas Fault. It runs from the top of the Gulf of California up through central California and then offshore at Cape Mendocino. So this is Cape Mendocino up here. The sense of motion on the San Andreas Fault is right lateral, which means that North America is moving relatively to the southeast compared to the Pacific Plate. Or another way of putting that is that the Pacific Plate is moving to the northwest relative to North America. These are not necessarily absolute motions, but they're just descriptions of plate motion relative to the neighboring plate. So that explains why we see what we do at Wallace Creek, that the offset appears to step to the right. So if we're standing, say, on the Pacific Plate side, as this picture shows, we've got Wallace Creek uh, over here on the left. It picks up on the North American Plate side to the right. Now, if we follow the San Andreas Fault up to where it runs offshore at Cape Mendocino, we see that there's another transform fault there. And this one is within the oceanic lithosphere, separating the Pacific Plate from the Juan de Fuca plate. The Juan de Fuca plate is a very small plate between the North American plate and the Pacific plate. So we're zooming in here on the Mendocino Fault in this central segment. And what's happening here is we've got a spreading center, so uh, an oceanic ridge where new oceanic crust is being generated, basically making new Pacific plate, making new Juan de Fuca plate. But then because of the zigzag nature of the plate boundary, we end up having uh, the Mendocino Fault accommodating differential motion between the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate. And that basically means that the two plates are scraping together there. So that brings us to this image in the book, the one that's designed to illustrate the concept of a transform fault. This is looking at a segment of oceanic ridge, which uh, has two plates. In this case, it's the African plate and the South American plate moving relative to one another. So basically, over time, the African plate pulls away from the South American plate. And as it pulls away, new oceanic crust is generated in the little gaps in between, like right in here. And you'll also notice that there's a portion of the plate boundary, like right here and right here, where the two plates are just scraping against one another. So there's grinding action there, earthquakes being generated as the two plates grind against one another. And that would be a nice example of a transform fault. So if we were to add some labels to that figure, we would see something that looks like the upper right of this image. You can see that these uh, transform faults are what they're called when they're active, when the two plates are actively scraping against one another. And then once the uh, new oceanic crust, say, of the African plate, which is generated at the ridge, 
clears the next segment of ridge, then the two parts of the plate are carried along at the same rate of speed in the same direction, and then we just call it a fracture zone. So here's a little question for review. There was a really big earthquake in 2010 in Haiti, uh, very close to the capital of Port-au-Prince. And you can see that that occurred along a transform plate boundary. This is the Enriquillo fault, which is one of the faults that helps separate the Caribbean plate from the North American plate. And you can see that the sense of motion here is left lateral. So if you're standing on the Caribbean plate looking north at the North American plate, it looks like the North American plate is moving to your left. So keeping in mind the lessons of Wallace Creek, what would you predict for changes to the shape of the island of Hispaniola and the nation of Haiti given geologic time operating on this fault? If you said that you would expect the coastline of Haiti basically to move this way over time or that this long peninsula basically is going to move towards the east over time, then congratulations. That's the answer that I was fishing for. Thank you very much for your attention. This has been a smart figure.